Alright, similar to the earlier topics, I'm going to run through the main points in uh, reaction kinetics. Okay, so uh, just a quick recap for the earlier topic on thermodynamics. We are really looking at the enthalpy changes. Okay, so uh, for example, to determine whether a reaction is uh, feasible or not, or spontaneous or not, we are looking at delta G, uh, which is equal to delta H uh, minus T delta S. So whether a reaction is thermodynamically feasible, there are two important components um, to take into serious consideration. That is the enthalpy changed, okay, as well as the entropy changed. Okay, so uh, in, in, in most cases, I think in the past, uh, we often think that only exothermic reaction uh, take place readily. But of course, uh, after you have gone through several examples, you know that that's not the case because there's also uh, an entropic contribution uh, from before and after a reaction. Okay, so that is uh, to be taken into consideration. And at the end of the day, whether a reaction will truly go forward or not, uh, there's another factor you need to consider and that is the, uh, the, the, the topic of this particular chapter which is uh, reaction kinetics. Yeah, because um, a reaction could be or can be very thermodynamically feasible but uh, the fall reaction may take like a few thousand years to take place. Okay, so for example, I think a very classic example would be the formation of uh, diamond or rather the formation of graphite from diamond. Okay, because um, Diamond is actually the thermodynamically less stable form. Yeah, but however, the activation barrier is very, very high. Okay, so uh, this topic on uh, reaction kinetics, uh, sometimes uh, you may hear people talking about, oh, um, the activation barrier is high, the activation energy, or, is, or you heard people, you hear people saying the kinetic barrier. Okay, so they actually all mean the same thing. Okay, they are talking about activation energy. Okay, so in short, uh, it's not very different from what you learn in um, secondary school. So uh, if you were to draw an energy profile diagram, so uh, the forward uh, is what we call the reaction coordinates. Okay, uh, if you plot it against uh, the kinetic energy, for, for example, or, or maybe make it more general energy for that matter, right? Um, what you know in, in thermodynamics, is probably that okay uh, if I start off at this particular energy level and I end up at this particular energy level um, in terms of thermodynamics we say that the reaction is exothermic so delta H is actually less than zero okay but for that matter you don't know if the kinetic barrier is high so the kinetic barrier can be just a, a small hike up the peak okay represented by the blue or it could be a very 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 huge barrier like the one in yellow okay so uh, that's why the other term for for this huge barrier we call it the kinetic barrier okay I think in secondary school we normally call it the activation energy okay so uh, this is just to give you a snapshot of uh, what you're gonna learn in this particular uh, chapter uh, in secondary school this particular chapter is known as speed of reaction Okay, but over in A-levels, we're going to go a lot into details. So, for example, we're going to uh, look at things such as uh, rate equations, the order of reaction, etc. Okay, so I will not bore you the details. These are the learning outcomes from Cambridge. Okay, so that's like 8.8a, yeah, all the way to the back. Okay, so there are just a lot of objectives that you need to know. Okay, so I'll just skip them for now. Um, okay, so first of all, uh, at the, for the introduction, uh, which is the first part. Uh, I think I mentioned it very briefly earlier on. Uh, you need to study uh, kinetics uh, for a number of reasons. Okay, so of course, uh, for, for, for our purpose, the most important reason is probably to understand um, the nitty gritties of how the reaction actually move forward. Um, so, uh, in, 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 in a generic way, we call it to understand about the mechanism of the question, or of, of the system. Okay, so what do we really mean by the, the mechanism of the system? So, um, <clears throat> so, for example, in secondary school or even up to now, whenever you write a, a chemical equation, so let's say, uh, you, let, okay, let's say, for example, you write NO2, the oxygen, NO2, uh, maybe plus half O2, uh, this actually gives you N2O5. Okay, so this is known as the overall uh, balance equation for, 
or this particle reaction, or you can call it the oxidation of NO2 to N2O5. However, uh, this balance equation does not give you any information on all the intermediate steps. Okay, so meaning uh, you don't know how the reaction proceeds. You only know the reactants and the products. Yeah, but chemists, uh, being, uh, I mean, uh, curious people, we, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are definitely not bothered by um, only knowing uh, before and after. We want to know what happens in between because it is the what happens in between, right? That um, science, uh, chemists are interested in, and along the way, we can design um, reactions that fit our purpose. Okay, so uh, the study of reaction kinetics bring a, will, will bring about a whole series of uh, studies, and um, later on in organic chem, uh, you you probably get to see more of it. So uh, we call this reaction mechanism. Okay, so reaction mechanism is something that we will cover a little bit uh, towards the end of kinetics. Uh, for the purpose of H2 curriculum, uh, you will learn a lot more uh, under organic chem. So in organic chem, there are five basic mechanisms that um, you need to be aware of. Yeah, and uh, they all uh, started from the studies of uh, reaction kinetics. Uh. So that's why this particular topic uh, is very important. So uh, it's important for you to be fundamentally sound in this topic so that as you uh, move on in your journey, right, you will... You, You'll, you'll face less hurdle. And um, some of you might have heard me talk about it in the tutorials that uh, this is a topic that, you know, at the start, you, you, you may feel that you're okay, uh, which means you, 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 you feel that you have some decent understanding um, in the beginning. But as you proceed on to year two, you realize that your understanding of this topic is actually is relatively shallow. Yeah, uh, but that's a good thing because uh, you kind of recognize what you don't know and then you slowly you improve upon it. Lah. Yeah, but uh, does it mean that you don't need to study this topic so hard now? No, I think um, you still need to at least get some foundation in first. And then uh, maybe in the next few months, you will slowly get assimilated with the concept. Yeah, do not try to understand everything like right at the start. Uh, well, I mean, you may feel that you understand bits and pieces, but um, I mean, if you can't give yourself a longer runway, at least up to year two, uh, June, and then your understanding will be uh, more profound, and then um, you realize that your journey ahead is actually more smooth sailing. Like. Okay, I think first of all. Um, we, we normally look at the rate of a reaction uh, by, by looking at the um, differential form. Uh, in this case, it's the mathematical form. So in this case, uh, so uh, if you look at these two terms, right, you might be maybe a little bit afraid because not many of us like mathematics, but um, uh, just be assured that uh, there won't be a lot of mathematics involved, except um, against the same thing as stoichio, uh, just multiply, uh, divide and, and subtract. Okay, yeah. So we need to first uh, define what is a uh, rate of reaction. So uh, it's defined as the change in concentration of a reactant uh, or product per unit time. Yeah. So there are two perspectives you need to take over here. So you are looking either at the change in concentration of the reactants, okay, uh, which is over here, or change in concentration of the products, uh, of course, per unit time. Uh, why is it that there is a minus and there's a plus sign here? Well, uh, because the concentration of reactant decreases over time. Okay, uh, so it is determined by this negative slope. Yeah, so uh, then after you'll be thinking, mm, then what? Well, why, why decrease over time must have a negative? Uh, well, I mean, eventually the rate that you calculate out is a positive number. Okay, so the negative sign is just a convention to tell you that uh, it is the rate of uh, decrease of reactant per unit time. And um, if you if you have a double negative, because eventually the reactant calculation will end up to be a negative number. Yeah, so uh, a negative number and a negative number end up as a positive number. Yeah, okay, so I hope that uh, clarifies a little bit. The unit uh, of rate is also something that students uh, sometimes have a bit of the issue with. Okay, so um, I think it's quite standard because we are looking at the change in concentration of the reactor or product per unit time, right? So we're looking at concentration. So in this case, it's likely to be more per dm cube uh, per second or per minute. But can a uh, real reaction takes on other units? It is possible. Um, uh, well, it really depends, but when we come to that, we'll deal with it. Okay, because as long as uh, there is something that could be that could act as a proxy to concentration, then uh, it can be used as a unit for it. 
yeah, I think we will we will deal with it when the time comes. Right? Okay, so uh, so for example, this uh, a relatively simple reaction where they read uh, in a one is to one ratio to give you two equivalent of H I. Okay, so in this case, uh, you will realize that the rate of disappearance of H2 and I2 will be the same. So you can view this as the rate of disappearance of the reactant H2 and the, and the other reactant I2. Okay, however, right, um, because you are forming two equivalent of HI at any one point in time, we can say that uh, the change in production, okay, the, or the rate of production of HI, right, is actually twice that of the rates of disappearance of either H2 or I2. Okay, so the rate will be double. So in, in this case, in order for the rate, in order for you to have an equivalent sign, you need to actually half the rates of production of HI so that uh, the magnitude will be similar to the rate of disappearance of H2 and I2. Okay, yeah, so I, I, I hope I get this clear, made this uh, relatively clear for you. Okay, so um, in this case, well, I mean, we can, um, we can work on um, exercise uh, 2.1. So for exercise 2.1, right, um, you, you are given this particular reaction which involves uh, bromides, 5, so that's uh, rate 1 is to 5 and bromides. And H plus is 6 equivalents. You produce 3 equivalents of bromine and uh, 3 equivalents of water here. Okay, so the uh, question is which of following uh, relationships are correct. Okay, so uh, in this case, it's written as the rate of production of bromine is the same as the rate of production of water. Is this true? Well, I mean, it is true because uh, both of them take on the same stoichiometric ratio. Okay, so uh, this will be true. Okay, then um, is it true that the rate of production of bromine is equal to three times the rate of disappearance for uh, bromine 5? Um, if we look at the stoichiometric ratio, I guess uh, it has to be true here. Just a brief look. Yeah, because the ratio is 1 is to 3. Yeah, so that means that uh, bromine will form three times uh, faster than uh, bromine 5 disappears. Yeah, so in order for the value to equate, I need to multiply by the rate of disappearance of bromine 5 by 3. Yeah, so uh, I will choose option 2 uh, to be correct as well. Okay, then um, what about option 3? Um, is it true that uh, the rate, 5 times the rate of disappearance of bromide um, is equals to 6 times the rate of disappearance of H plus? Um, is it, yeah, I mean, I mean, is this true? Okay, so if we just go back a little bit to, to maybe um, us trying to write this particular relationship, right? Okay. How should we write it then? Okay, so we should write it as uh, uh, minus E uh, disappearance of BrO3 minus over dT. Okay, yeah, this should be equal to minus one fifth, okay, uh, disappearance of bromides and um, one sixth disappearance of H plus. Okay. I hope I'm making sense here. Yep. Okay. So um, if you if you if you, if you actually take um, if you actually take this away from the equation, and then uh, you allow this to actually cross multiply, cross multiply over, cross multiply over, right? Yeah. Then you realize that the numbers is not uh, five six. It's actually the other way around. Okay, so yeah, so in that case, uh, I will pick uh, one and two, and that gives me option B to be the correct option. Okay, yep. All right. Um, next, let us look at uh, two point two. Um, okay, so so normally, uh, I think similar to mathematics, uh, there are a few terms which we we we, we need to uh, be very familiar with. Okay, so whenever we talk about rates, remember uh, earlier on. Uh, Rates is actually uh, defined as the change in uh, concentration of either the products or the reactants. Yeah. Um, however, I think mathematically, uh, there are three unique kind of rates that we are probably um, interested in. Okay. So I think number one would be instantaneous rates. Okay, it will be instantaneous rates. 
Uh, actually, the meaning is similar to mathematics. Okay, so as the term instantaneous implies, uh, so we are we are actually look we are interested in um, the rate at a particular timing. Okay, so uh, in mathematical term, that means I will draw a tangent at time t, for example. Okay, so for example, uh, let's say okay, I mean I mean I mean just uh, relatively random. Just something random. Let's have concentration over time, and then let's say I have a graph that looks like that. So back to mathematics. Okay, let's say I'm interested in the rate at time, say alpha, for example, over here. Okay, so that's time, let's say t1. So in order to find the rate, I will have to draw a tangent across over here. Yeah, so similar. Similar mathematics. So uh, that is why if you have a, a good uh, proficiency in mathematics, I think um, uh, chemistry wouldn't be a major issue. <laughs> okay. Then um, what about initial rates? Yeah, what about initial rates? Uh, what are we really talking about? Okay, so my graph, I need to connect back to zero. So sorry, I mean, I started. Okay, so let's say the rates are that. Okay, back to zero here. Okay, back to zero. So initial rate, as the name implies, uh, is, is the instantaneous rate at time equals zero. So we are looking at this rate over here, the instantaneous rate at time equals zero. Okay, so uh, uh, this is uh, very important because um, uh, we we most of the time we don't know at the start how fast is the reaction. Okay, and maybe over time how it changes. Okay, um, folks, please take note that the graph I drawn here, right, is just uh, a mathematical uh, representation. Uh, I'm not trying to say that the rate of chemical reaction you're going to learn goes uh, in, a, in a roller coaster fashion. Most of the time, it doesn't go like this. Okay, it's just a mathematical graph that I randomly draw. Okay, so please do not be too upset or, or, or too, 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 too shocked by the fact that, hey, how come in chemistry, the graph can be so complicated? Uh, no, okay, it's not like this. Yeah, and um, the final thing we are interested in is what we call the average rate. It's defined here. Yeah, so, uh, okay, so average really means average. Lah. So let's say I, I ask you, okay, so what is the average uh, rate of reaction uh, over from, let's say, time 0 to time equal to T2. Okay, so basically, uh, you are just drawing a line like this. Yeah, this is the average rate of production. Okay, regardless of whatever happened on top. Yeah. Okay, so um, of course, I mean, I mean, this graph is kind of complicated. So let's say if I were to use a simpler graph, uh, which uh, in most cases uh, it represent reality more. So let's say we have a graph that go goes like this. Okay, yeah. So um, in this case, my instantaneous rate at time equals zero will be here. That's the initial rate. Okay, then uh, the average rate over T from 0 to T1 will be the yellow line that looks like this. Okay, I think this makes a lot more sense lah, than what I have drawn earlier on. Yeah, but I'm just trying to show you some extreme example, uh, especially in the definition of instantaneous rate. Okay, yeah. Um, so I think this needs no introduction. I think a negative gradient indicates decrease in concentration, positive increase. I mean, yeah, I, I, I think, yeah, so you have to check your axis carefully. Okay, uh, although I'm uh, giving some generic terms here, but you need to check, is this the concentration of the reactant or the product? So it's important for you to uh, double check before you move on. Okay, so uh, I, I don't think this also needs further introduction. If the steeper the gradient is, the faster is the rate. I think mathematically, uh, you should be aware of this. Okay, so I don't think I want to spend too much time on this. Okay, now we have 2.2, which um, is a pretty long question, but uh, I think we can uh, uh, maybe briefly discuss it. Okay, so uh, yeah, so you have the, the flowing data, the graph uh, plotted for the reaction, um, uh, CH3Br, uh, with OH minus to get this product. Okay, so uh, in JC2 or say the end of JC1, you will learn this reaction known as, I mean this particular reaction is known as nucleophilic substitution. Okay, just for your information, this is known as nucleophilic uh, substitution. Okay, this is just some additional information in case you're interested in. So basically the OH minus acts as the nucleophile and it substitutes the bromine. Okay, so that's why it comes in as OH. So anyway, um, the scientists actually studied this particular reaction over here. Okay, so um, yeah, so they draw a graph like this from 
uh, yeah, so the graph has been drawn for you. So if it's an assessment, uh, if let's say this is going to be an assessment question, it will probably ask you to draw the graph yourself. Okay, then over here they ask you to determine the initial rates of the above reaction. So I guess uh, you you have to uh, look at it from your from your own um, um, on, on lecture book. Okay, and then of course you you draw a tangent that. Uh, goes through time equal to zero. Okay, it's difficult for me to draw on the screen, but um, maybe uh, roughly, yeah, so very, very roughly, I think it should it should look something something like this. So if I were to, to start drawing a tangent over here, uh, I will just draw a straight line. Okay, it, okay, it's not, it's definitely difficult to draw because I can't use a ruler. So like this, all the way down. Okay, something along this line. Okay, something along this line. Alright, so uh, in this case, yeah, you just obtain the two coordinates over here and I think over here as well. And then, uh, yeah, and then you can easily find a gradient. Okay, so that will be your answer to part A. Okay, I don't think I need to calculate for you, but, uh, and of course, uh, my line drawn on the screen is definitely not as sharp as the one you, 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 you draw on um, your lecture book. So please do it on your own. Okay, um, what about the units? Okay, so uh, normally students have a little bit of issue with the units at the start. So, well, again, uh, similar to your uh, mathematics, um, it's y, it's change in y over change in x, right? So, therefore, moles per dm cube per minute. Okay, so I, I don't think this should be a major issue anymore. Okay, then after that, determine the instantaneous rate at time equal um, 1. So again, same thing, we just try to draw a line over here. But um, to the best of our ability, uh, if, you, if you kind of like heard me during uh, the lectures or the tutorials, um, try to make sure the line is as long as possible, to cut through as many points as possible. Yeah, this is actually to minimize uh, errors. Okay, yeah. So again, uh, please do that and I think you can easily calculate this. Determine the average rate of the above reaction for the first um, 120 minutes okay yeah for the first 120 minutes okay so i'm just going to erase this because i can't really see very clearly okay so for the first 120 minutes okay so what am i going to do what i'm going to do is i'm going to put a dotted line here okay and then uh, over here yep and then i'm just going to draw a line down oops sorry my line is not straight Horrendous. Okay, can. then after that, yeah, from here, I will determine. And then, yes, I can get this as well. Okay, so uh, basically 2.2 is just a very simple uh, 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 question, exercise, uh, for you to test your understanding of the difference between uh, initial rate, otherwise known as instantaneous rate at time equals zero, okay, and instantaneous rate at any time, as well as average rate. Okay, yep. Okay, next we're going to move on to uh, something a little bit more technical, uh, which is on uh, rate equations, order and rate constant. Yeah, so this is the more technical part, um, which I think um, it, it, it's something that um, you probably want to pay a lot of attention to. Yeah, because uh, in most cases, it is those technical definition that, you know, like sometimes uh, students get confused with. And then uh, when you move on to year two, uh, when everything comes together, especially when you learn chemical equilibrium, uh, after June holidays, right? Then uh, you, you, you're going to get to some confusions. Yeah. Okay. So um, yeah. So for, okay. So first of all, if let's say we have a chemical reaction, also again, uh, same thing, A plus B to get products. Okay. Now the stoichiometric coefficient, right? Uh, um, or, I mean. Well, I mean, if you write a balance equation, like what, like okay, so, so, so for example, like what we did just now, like, like n O two two equivalent plus half O two, then I'm gonna get n two O five something like that, right? Yeah. So this stoichiometric coefficient, right? Uh, it, it 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 says nothing about like how the reactor reacts. I think I think that's something that you have to be aware of, like. Okay, it says nothing about how the reactor reacts. Okay. Um. So normally when we want to Perform kinetics experiment, right? Um, let's say we have A and B over here. So, so I just trying to draw some analogy between NO2 and oxygen, and then of course the product is N2O5. Let's say we have A and B here, right? Normally, the first thing we need to do is we'll write a rate equation, okay, out. Okay, so uh, you can write the rate equation as rate is equals to. I'm just, I'm just copying this, uh, K 
Okay, we are now just doing a technical definition. Huh? So uh, you don't need to worry about uh, why must it be up, uh, in a certain way. Huh? Okay, we're just doing a technical definition. So in this case, K is what we call the rate constant, which is uh, over here. This is the rate constant. Um, a and B, of course, the reactant. Huh? Okay, uh, M and N, right, are what we call the order of reaction. Okay, which uh, we're going to explain uh, later on. Uh, but uh, what we need to stress on is that the order of reaction right, is not the stoichiometric coefficient. So let me repeat, the order of reaction is not the stoichiometric coefficient. Yeah, because this is often confused with uh, the next topic, which is chemical equilibrium. Because in chemical equilibrium, when you write out your equilibrium expression, um, the power term is the stoichiometric coefficient. Yeah, but for kinetics, no. Yeah, so you have to be very clear that um, your order of reaction, right, it should be determined experimentally and not just lift from your um, chemical, the, the stoichiometric, the, the, the stoichiometric ratio from your uh, chemical uh, reaction. Yeah, just take note of this. And I can explain why uh, easily. Because most of the time, right, in a chemical reaction, uh, it usually occurs more over more than one step. Yeah, over more than one step. Then, um, unless we are talking about elementary reaction, okay, so I'm bringing some uh, terms now, then you must be uh, scratching your head. La. So, what, what what do we mean by occurring over uh, some steps? Uh, what do you mean by uh, elementary reaction? And what exactly is the order of reaction? Okay. okay, so maybe we tackle that one by one. Um, order of reaction, um, I think based on technical definition, it's not well defined for now, as in we're not really going to define it. It's just, we're just going to write it um, per what we have in the, in the expression above. It's the power term. Is the, is the power of its concentration term. But what does it really represent? Okay, it gives you some indication, okay, it gives you some indication of uh, the number of species involved uh, in a key slow step, okay, or maybe in a slow step for that matter. Yeah, then after you'll be thinking, what exactly is a slow step? Yeah, so, you know, that's why I said, if you want to understand it fully, I think you have to uh, uh, assume some definition first, before the things come in. Of course, uh, to learn this topic well, uh, we, 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 we shouldn't, you shouldn't be learning it uh, by looking at the technical stuff and then after that try to learn it. Lah. Yeah, I think we should be going through the experiment. Yeah, but of course, uh, given the curriculum time or this, yeah, so we, we you, you, you really need to know some lecture notes, uh, material first before, before we go to the lab and do the experiment. Yeah, so I think ideally, uh, uh, that's what we should be looking at. Lah. Okay, so uh, yep. Uh, okay, so you just keep this at the back of your mind. Okay, so these are the, the M and the M term are actually your your order of reaction. Uh, rate constant is basically just a proportionality term. Okay, which is also experimentally determined, and it is very sensitive to temperature. So remember this: it's very sensitive to temperature. Yep, and. Since the rate constant is experimentally determined, your order of reactions is also experimentally determined. That means your rate is experimentally determined as well. I mean, I mean, yeah. Um, so the, another common misconception that students might have is, uh, must the rate equation only look like this? You know what I mean? Uh, can I take all fraction? You know, like, can, can I have like, um, like, like one, like is it possible to have one over a something along those lines? Yes, it's possible, but you rarely see them uh, in H two. Yeah, rarely. Okay. Yeah. So I think uh, let's just uh, move on from here. Yeah. So I think we have this little table here uh, that kind of like tell uh, highlights to you that the stoichiometric coefficient is not necessarily related to the value of the order like, yeah. Okay. So uh, I think I I stress to you. Uh, before so so don't 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 assume that they are the same thing okay yeah um uh i think uh things will get a lot clearer as we move progress forward okay so i i think i'm, I'm really really serious about this yeah it will become clearer uh but please get the technical uh, uh definition right first meaning um i i think uh you need to have a generic under, uh, understanding of the term rate equation order of reaction and as well rate constant. So once you have that, 
uh, as you we progress forward through our practicals, as we do more experiments, as you do a little bit more practice, and maybe along the way, uh, I can get to show you some uh, basic research papers on kinetics. Ah, then I think your understanding will be uh, better, stronger, and of course, uh, uh, when you look back, you know things are actually not as difficult as it seems. Okay, <clears throat> so now understanding the order of reaction, So, uh, so basically, in short, right? If you heard me earlier on, uh, because earlier on I mentioned, oh, you know, order gives you like an indication of the number of species involved in the slow, in the in the, in the key slow step, etc. Right? Then you'll be thinking, hey, how come now the 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 the, the ideas here are a bit different, uh? Okay, the ideas here are a bit different because remember, all these are determined through experiments, right? Yeah. So 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 we 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 design an experiment, uh, to test. Uh, how the change in concentration affect the rates, right? And then, and then later on, when we want to talk about slow step, when we want, when we want to talk about the the reagents, uh, uh, or the key reagents or key uh, number of reagents uh, involved in, in in whatever key step, right? Yeah, we come to that later. Okay, but most importantly, right, we need to know the the fact that we are actually designing um, an experiment to help us uh, test how the change in the in the in the concentration right will affect the rates okay so uh, i think over here we need uh, beyond the technical definition um, we need to introduce to you uh, three common order okay i mean i'm not saying that you only will get uh, zero, 01 and 2 okay but i'm just saying that i think without going into the extreme right, you need to know that there are three common order that or of reaction that uh, I think you need to be very familiar with. Uh. Okay, number one is zero order. Okay, zero order reaction. So zero order here means that um, uh, no matter how I change the concentration of the reactant, right, the rate will not be affected. So in short, we say that it is independent of the concentration of A. Okay, so the keyword here is independent. Okay, so next. Um, first order is the most common. Okay, first order is the most common. So what exactly is first order? So uh, that means the rate of reaction is directly proportional to the concentration of A. Okay, so that's first order kinetics. Sometimes, okay, there are a few ways to call it. Okay, so sometimes we say the order of reaction with respect to A is 1. Okay, then sometimes we say it's first order with respect to A. Or sometimes we say that A follows first order kinetics. Yeah, so no matter how you say it, you mean it means the same thing. So that means first so directly proportional here means that if you double the concentration of A, the rates will double. Okay, then uh, of course the next thing is uh, what about uh, second order? Second order is actually uh, less common, but uh, when you double concentration, when you, when you double the concentration right of A, right, the rate quadruples. So uh, increase by four times. So uh, another way to put it is it is directly proportional to a squared concentration of a squared. So that means that uh, that means that if you were to plot concentration of a squared against um, um, let's see, okay, against sorry, let me let me change this. If you plot rates against uh, concentration of a squared, okay, you'll get a straight line. That passes through the origin. Yeah. Okay. So that's what it means. Like, directly proportional. Okay. Yeah. So uh, let me see what other important things you need to know. I think um, se seriously, uh, it will really, really, really get clearer, right? If you if you study uh, them in details a little bit more detail, and then if you have if you're exposed to the different scenario. Uh, uh, to be honest, actually, the topic of reaction kinetics, right? It's Probably a lot more interesting as compared to uh, thermodynamics, at least in terms of doing experiments and, and other things, like because you get to see uh, more color change, I guess. Yeah, and, and it's I, I I don't know. I think you I, at least I enjoy it when I was a student, and um, I think over time I think um, when you see students doing practicals, they probably enjoy kinetics a lot more than uh, thermodynamics because thermodynamics is basically just pouring solution or solid. Uh, into a calorimeter, in this case coffee cup, and then stir, and then measure temperature. Kinetics is, you know, a lot of preparation work. And then after that, they pour the thing, they use the stopwatch, they measure, yeah, so it's quite interesting in that sense. Okay, then, okay, some of you might be asking, uh, 
could there be other possibility? Yes, I think I mentioned you, you can you can take on fractions as well. Yeah, so uh, fractional order is possible. Uh, what other things? Let me try to let me try to see whether I miss anything out. No, okay, I don't think there are other important things that uh, I need to I need to mention. Yeah, of course there are other details along the way, but um, we'll deal with them as it comes. Uh. Okay. Um, okay, so we have an exercise uh, 3.1. Uh, I mean, we can easily do a quick one, no problem. Okay, so in this case, um, uh, okay, so the question is for the for the reaction between hydrogen peroxide and acidified iodide ions. Uh, okay, so it's given here. The order of reaction with respect to H2O2 I minus the H plus were found to be 110 respectively. Write the rate equation. Okay, so I think it's clear cut because you were told the answer 110. Okay, so uh, remember the generic form of rate equation is rate is equals to the rate constant. Okay, it's a small k eh, by the way. It's a small k. Um, concentration of H two O two to the power of one. Remember, it's to the power of one. Okay, remember that. Not anything else. And then um, I minus to the power of one as well. Not three. Eh? Okay, nothing got to do with stoichiometric coefficient. Okay, and H plus concentration to the power of zero. Okay, but you shouldn't just leave your answer like this because normally uh, we will want to write it in the simplest form. So just H2O2, I minus, and that's it. Okay, normally uh, we do not need to write one to emphasize that it's one because without writing it, it's understandable. Okay, yeah, but... Anything to the power of zero is one, so I think uh, we, we should omit the H plus term. Okay, then uh, state the overall order. So the overall order is simply the summation of the individual order. So it's just one plus one, which is two. Okay, I think this should be uh, straightforward. Okay, understanding the rate constant over here. Okay, so um, so what exactly is the rate constant? Uh? So the rate, of course, uh, is the K term. Yeah. Then, uh, I think over here they mentioned that besides concentration of reactant, temperature and presence of catalyst also affect the rate of, uh, uh, of a reaction. Okay, so of course, uh, uh, if you recall from secondary school, right, what exactly does a cat oh, I mean, uh, what is the role of a catalyst? Uh, uh, I, mean, I mean, I know that a catalyst uh, accelerates the reaction and it leaves itself uh, relatively unchanged at the end of the reaction. But uh, does it lower the activation barrier? Okay, no. Uh, remember this, a uh, catalyst do not lower the activation barrier of a reaction. The reason is, uh, the activation barrier is intrinsic to that reaction. Uh, nothing can change, unless studies have shown that, un unless there are new studies that indicate that whatever has been studied earlier on is incorrect. Uh. So, uh, uh, a catalyst do not lower the activation barrier of a reaction, but rather, right, it provides an alternative pathway. Okay, for the reaction to take place. Yeah, so uh, I think you need to, you, you you probably want to want, want to remember this. It, it, it's like walking out of school. Uh, if you walk, if you decide to walk along the, the, the slope and then uh, reach the turnstile, that's your business. Uh, uh, is there an alternative route? Yes, there's an alternative route, but uh, does it mean that when you walk the alternative route, the original route is not present? No. Okay, it is still there because it's intrinsic, it's built on already. Yeah, so just... Uh, remember this. Okay, um, temperature affects the, the rate constant K as well uh, because uh, the uh, I mean increase in temperature usually uh, bring about um, the completion of a reaction at uh, I mean a faster completion of a reaction. Okay, so there's this uh, Arrhenius equation. So again, it's given to you. Uh, of course, it's it has been studied over over a couple of hundred years. Uh, um, that gives you a relationship between K and uh, Activation barrier. So uh, it's just given to you like this. Okay, so basically, uh, there is a pre exponential factor, basically a constant, and then it's related to the activation barrier, which is Ea, and then divided by Rt, which is the molar rate constant, and T is a thermodynamic temperature. We're not, we're not, okay, we're not going to derive this equation for you for sure, like, because of course, uh, it's related to what uh, people have done in the thermodynamics as well. Uh, but we're just going to give it to you because we need you to see uh, some trends. Uh. So basically, uh, from this equation, right, you know that uh, if I increase temperature, your rate constant will increase. Okay. Uh, if the activation barrier is lowered, it's changed due to the presence of a catalyst. 
uh, of course the rate constant will increase as well. Okay, but any change in concentration right, will not actually affect the rate constant. Remember this. Uh, why? Um, well, I mean, the reason is uh, there is no concentration term inside. So remember, it is independent of the concentration of any reactant. Yeah, so you probably want to um, want to want to be aware of it. Lah. Okay, yeah. So uh, in that case, if if let's say uh, I keep my concentration fixed, I keep my concentration of A fixed, I keep my concentration of B fixed, and of course the order is is, is fixed uh, due to intrinsic uh, reaction, right? Uh, a faster rate of reaction, right, will really imply that um, uh, K takes on a larger value. Okay, and, and and this is probably due to a few reasons. It could be lower. It could be sorry. It could be higher temperature, or it could be a lower activation barrier. Okay, so uh, something that you need to think of. Okay, yeah. Uh, of course, K depends on the overall. Uh, the, the I mean the units of K. Sorry, the units of K depends on the overall order of reaction as well. And and that is usually something that maybe um I don't know, but uh students find a little bit. Uh, I mean, it's interesting to see that sometimes they can do mathematics quite well, uh, especially H two mathematics. But when it comes to deriving units, uh, they they get a little bit. Um, I mean, I mean, there are some issues. So okay, so um, let let let's try to look at um, let's say exercise um, uh, three point two uh, Okay, let's say we have a overall first order reaction uh. Okay, let's say it's an overall first order reaction. Okay, I mean, I just give a random example uh. So let's say it's uh, a. Um, um, Plus B to give me AB. Yeah, so let's say the rates uh, law is rates is equals to K uh, A to the power of 1. Okay, so overall first order. Okay, so what about the units for the rate constant? Okay, so okay, so this should be relatively straightforward. Uh, units for rates is probably moles per dm cube, let's say per second. Okay, then um, what about the units for concentration? Okay, so uh, it's probably moles per dm cube. Okay, so you notice that moles per dm cube gets cancelled on both sides. So therefore, the units for rate is per second. Okay, yeah. So let's say we change the we change the rate law. We change it to not I mean not we change that, but give another scenario where the rate law is said to be uh, first order with respect to a, first order with respect to oh, uh, to b. Okay, maybe second order respect to A, for example. Second order respect to A. Okay, let's say, I mean, okay, maybe I write this. Um, 2A plus B, you get A to B. Okay, second order and um, first order respect to B. And then, how do we get the rate constant? Well, uh, same logic. Okay, we work through the same logic. So again, rate uh, units is moles per dm cube per second. Okay, and then, what about concentration term? Okay, so the concentration term, right? Is moles per dm cube, okay, squared, and then the other concentration term is moles per dm cube, right? Okay, then you realize that um, the the three are actually on the same um, they are on the same side. So in this case, we can actually simplify it. Okay, we can actually simplify it. Uh, I just erase this first. Okay, we can simplify it by writing it as uh wait uh, sorry let me get this to work. Okay, we can simplify it by writing it as moles uh, to the power of 3 uh, dm to the power of 9. Sorry, minus 9 for that matter. Minus 9. Okay, so if we simplify this uh, conversion, we 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 can we will cancel this mole. Okay. And then uh, this left to be 2. Okay, then we'll cancel per dm cube. This to be minus six. Okay, and then we'll bring this over to this side. Okay, when we bring it over, uh, we take the reciprocal. So therefore, the units for k. Okay, is actually equals to, um, mole squared. Okay, mole to the power of minus two. Sorry, not mole squared. Dm six. Okay per second okay so yeah that's how you kind of like determine um, the units uh, for the rate constant okay so I hope you, you you find this example useful okay so the next thing is to determine the 
determining the rate equation. Okay, so uh, okay, so this part there are quite a bit of things to to cover. So we will probably just cover uh, the first bit until maybe four point one, and then uh, we'll slowly move on to the next bit uh, the next time round. Okay, so yeah, so um, how do we actually determine the 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 rate equation? I mean, I mean the, the rate equation. Yeah. So I think uh, we need to, of course, uh, perform experiments. Okay. So graphically, right? Uh, I mean, there is no, I mean, there's no world standards or, or whatsoever uh, to that. I mean, you can do anything you want as long as um, uh, you are able to to, to get a a, a, re a result that suits your needs. Right? Okay. But of course, um, in order to convey. Uh, uh, the, the teaching of this topic and of course uh, to keep things a little bit standardized um, we have to we, we, we have to introduce um, or in, incorporate some artificial environment so in this case uh, in, in general we, we introduce three different types of uh, graphs okay that is probably uh, uh, things that you need to take note of like. so one is called concentration time um, uh, rate against concentration and rate against time okay um, well, I mean, again, as I said, this is artificial. Uh, mentioning this over here is kind of defeats the purpose. Uh, yeah. So I think it, it will it will really help if you know, like, if you if you move on, go go through the motion first, and then uh, you can revisit it as and when you are uh, available. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I mean, I mean, this is just to show you roughly uh how 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 the graph may looks like. Uh. Okay. Now. Okay. So uh. We look at figure two first. Like. It shows you three possible concentration time graph. Okay, so remember this is concentration time graph. So um, one is a straight line. Okay, the other one is a curve. Looks like exponential curve, and the other one is a steeper curve. Okay, so uh, when you study the curve, you need to look at the shape, and then uh, as well as the half life. Half life needs definitions here. Okay. Uh, Actually, as the name implies, it's probably the time taken for you to have something available. So in this case, the variable is concentration. Okay, so uh, ensure that you understand the, the term half-life because uh, it's something that we're going to use quite often. Okay, so uh, I think, remember what we said earlier on about the so-called the definition or the understanding of what exactly is zero order first order second order remember we were saying that zero order means uh, the rate of reaction is independent to the concentration of the particular reactant and uh, if it's a first order reaction we'll say that uh, the rate of reaction uh, uh, is directly proportional to the concentration of the reactant etc right yeah so i think uh, if you look at the shape for a right i think you should be able to tell that uh, the rate of this reaction is indeed independent to the concentration of R. Why do we say that? Because it remains as a straight line. Yeah, you see, if the rate of reaction is affected by the changing concentration of R, right, the graph will curve, right? Similar to B and C, but it didn't. Yeah, so that's why uh, we have the first bullet point here. If it is a straight line, that means uh, the order reaction respect to R is, in this case, is zero. Okay, yeah. What about a curve? Yeah, what about a curve? Okay, so a curve here, um, it's a bit complicated, but that's that, that's the usual uh, favorite testing point as well. Uh, because uh, there are more things to do. So so normally uh, for assessment, they, I mean, they just, we, we, we tend like to test the students first order. Why? Because there are more things to do. What do you mean by more things to do? Okay, you see, if it's zero order, it's quite quite boring because it's just a straight line. I mean, a straight line. And then you know that it's independent to the changing concentration of R, right? But if it's a curve, right, it can be... Okay, a curve simply means not zero, right? I mean, it can be anything. Like, like it can be second order, it can be first order. Yeah. So how do we prove that it's first order? Well, I mean, we prove that it's first order by ensuring that uh, it's half-life is a constant, like, Okay, it's a constant how do you tell from this graph? You can't tell from the graph. Yeah, you have to plot it and tell. Okay, so we are just saying you can't tell from here. You have to plot it. Okay, C uh, is an example of a of a of a second order uh, graph. But of course, over here we can't tell. So we say that uh, it's not zero, not first. Okay. Yep. Um. So what? 
what what exactly do half life means or, or does it does it does it mean um, anything significant or what, I mean we said we said it just now right so let's say we plot a um a first order graph okay it's what we call exponential decay la. okay you look at the first half life okay that's uh the first t half and you look at the second half life right you know you notice that the value is the same yeah so okay of course, in real experiment, it need not be the same. It could be approximately the same. Okay, so if they are approximately the same, you can say that because t half is approximately a constant, therefore the order of reaction with respect to r is one. Okay, so that's how you 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 could uh, go about answering uh, such question. Okay, but there's one little thing that I thought I I, I thought uh, it's it's worth mentioning now. Uh, that is to to actually uh impress upon the students that um, half-life um, half-life need not be consecutive half-life so what we are doing here right if you realize it's consecutive half-life it's like from r naught to half r naught to a quarter r naught so this is known as consecutive half-life because you divide by half and you divide by half again okay um, is it is it possible to to determine non-consecutive i mean to determine t half non consecutively it is possible so let's say we look at this look. okay this is actually uh, 0.75 r naught right okay we look at this value okay and then we look at half of 0 0.75 so that's uh, probably 0 0.375 so that's probably over here look. so this is 0 0.375 r naught Okay, so over here, so again, um, this is likely to be the same t-half, let's say the third t-half, okay, it's likely to take on the same value. So there isn't a need for me to do con uh, consecutive half right? I can take the yellow one as well as the blue one, or the yellow one and the red one, or the red and the blue, which is what we call consecutive half right? Okay, yep. And then, um, what about product time graph? Is it possible to... To get half life from there as well, yes, uh, definitely possible. But uh, usually students have difficulty with product time graph. The reason is uh, they tend to do it the same way as reactor time graph, which means they half everything. Okay, but product time graph. Uh, let me just stress: you can't half everything. Okay, because it doesn't make sense. Remember, it doesn't make sense. Okay, why? Again, can we go back to the definition? The half-life is the time taken for the concentration of reactant to decrease to half its original value. We're talking about reactant, right? In this case, uh, the product value is not halving, but it's actually increasing, right? Yeah, but we can always use it as a proxy. Okay, what do we mean? Okay, so let's say R to P, right? Okay, R to P, R to product, R to product. If I start out with 100% R, I have 0% product, right? Agree? Okay. Then um, at 50% R, I will have 50% product. Yeah, which is why the first T half of your product time graph is from 0 to half P. Yeah. The second T half, okay, in this case, uh, when I half it again from 50% to 25%, okay, which is over here. Um, I do not half my 50%. In fact, uh, you should look at it as what is the additional percentage of product form. So if you add 25% to 50%, that gives you 75%. Yeah, so that's why they do it 75%. Yeah, so this is how you find half life from product time graph. Okay, you always look at the value based on the reactant. Yeah, and not just blindly half it. Okay, remember this. This is uh, probably the most important thing that um, you want to learn about product time graph for first order kinetics. Okay, and um, okay, so in this case, for a reaction that is first order respect to R, the half life is independent of R and related to the rate constant by this equation. T half is equals to ln 2 over k. Okay, now um, some of you might be wondering like, how, how did this particular relationship uh, come about. 
Um, okay, actually, without going um, too much into the mathematics, uh, I can easily show it to you. So, for example, we have a first order kinetics. Let's say rates um, is equals to K, uh, concentration of A, right? For example, now rate is defined as the rate, in this case, is the rate of disappearance of rectal A. So it's minus dA uh, dT, which is uh, K dA, KA, sorry. Okay, uh, I know that uh, you guys haven't learned this in mathematics, but uh, we're going to do what we call an ordinary differential equation. So uh, we're going to uh, split some of the, we, we, we're just going to move some of the terms around. Okay, so uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move my, I'm going to move my T, uh, DT, sorry, uh, to the right and minus sign to the right as well. And then I'm going to move my A to the left. Why am I doing this? Uh, this is a method in ordinary differential equation known as variable separable. Okay? Yep. So I'm going to do that. Okay? So I'm going to end up with uh, 1 over A uh, dA. Okay? Which is equals to minus K dT. Okay? Then right now, I'm going to do an integration on both sides. I'm going to integrate on both sides. So I'm going to integrate from... Um, time equals 0 to time equals to t. And then at time equals 0, concentration of A is A naught. At time equals to t, concentration of A is just concentration of A. Okay, then um, from here, what's going to happen? Okay, if you integrate 1 over A, I think uh, you should know that you're going to get ln A, right? Ln concentration of A, right? Okay, and then uh, again, um, the range will be from A, not to A, okay? And um, over here, I'm going to get minus KT, the range is from 0 to T. Okay, I hope I'm making a little bit of sense. I, I, I don't know, hopefully, yep. Okay, yep. Then um, over here, um, so you're going to get ln A minus ln A, not right? So uh, I'm going to end up with ln uh, A over A naught, okay, which is equals to minus uh, KT, okay. Then I'm going to shift the thing around. Uh, so therefore, uh, A over A naught is equals to exponential function. Now you know why is the exponential, okay, yeah, E to the power minus KT. So, uh, Okay, so maybe I, I maybe I'll okay okay maybe I will stop here briefly, okay. because uh, moving on uh, is not necessary, but I'm just going to um, okay okay maybe I'll just I I'll just stop at this stage, okay. So I'm just okay I'm just going to box this up first, okay. Now at t half, okay. Do you agree that a is equals to half a naught. Okay, so if you agree with this and you substitute inside into the yellow expression, right? Okay, you're gonna end up with uh, half a naught over a naught. So that's half, which is equals to e minus kt. Ah, I, I I hope, but in this case your t is actually t half. So I I hope we are coming uh, closer and closer already. Okay, then we take ln on both sides. If we take ln on both sides, I'm going to end up with ln half, which is equals to minus k t half. But ln half, right, is actually ln 2 to the power minus 1. And then uh, the minus sign will get cancelled. So you get ln 2 equals to k t half. So therefore, t half is equals to ln 2 okay. So that's how you get this relationship. Okay, I mean, for those of you who are interested. And I think there are some uh, mathematics background uh, being given here, which, of course, if you are interested, uh, you can you can read about it. I, I, I think it's essentially what I've gone through, but uh, they did not go into the nitty gritties, yeah. So uh, uh, you can read about it if you're interested. Okay, but uh, probably sometimes it's a bit shortened, so you might not be able to understand the full picture. Okay, so uh, we'll quickly look at exercise 
Okay, so over here, uh, we were told that the ratio of iodine with proper known in the presence of equals as is zero. Okay, uh, which diagram represents the ratio of I2 uh, with time? Uh, okay, I mean, I mean, it's clear cut. Uh, I mean, the question already tell you. Um, the order, I mean, the order of reaction with respect to iodine is zero. So indeed, in this case, um, we are looking at what kind, what, what kind of graph are we looking at? We are looking at uh, reactant time graph. Okay, reactant time graph. So therefore, the gradient represents the rate of change of, in this case, iodine with respect to time. Okay, so I do not expect the rate to change. So it should be a constant rate. So a constant rate, I'll, I'll, I'll be choosing option B. Okay, the rest I wouldn't even look at it. Okay, if, if you truly understand what exactly is happening in kinetics. Okay, B, the following reaction was believed uh, to be first order. Okay, so X products. Uh, so what can a graph be used for? Okay, so first order. So to determine the rate of reaction at any instance, definitely you can. You just draw the gradient. Uh, you can find the instantaneous rate at any time. To check whether the reaction is first order throughout, uh, you can easily do that. Uh, if you understood what I said earlier on regarding this derivation, okay, you can easily do that. You can easily determine half life as well, okay. So I don't think uh, we 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 need to go a lot into details, okay. Then uh, okay, next four point two is a bit is a bit mathematical, but I I think we definitely can can uh, do something about it, okay. So uh, you you were told that the rate of Removal of the pain killing drug paracetamol from body is first order kinetics. Rate constant is 0 0.26 per hour. So, how long does it take to remove 75% of the um, paracetamol that um, a patient uh, consumes? Okay, so I think uh, maybe it does help if you can uh, first calculate the T half, right? So in this case, uh, remember t half is equals to ln 2 over k. Okay, so in this case, k is given to me uh, as um, per hour. Okay, so in this case, I just need to uh, punch my calculator. Uh, that is, uh, this is ln 2 over um, 0.26. Okay, so I'm just going to um, use my calculator. Okay, first, um, ln 2. Um, Long two, okay, uh, divide by 0.26. So I'm going to, I, I, I will end up with 2.67 hours. So it's 2.67 hours. Okay, 2.67 hours. Okay, then uh, I want to remove 75% of paracetamol. So uh, I need to decide, okay, so I start with 100%. Uh, then uh, after first half life, I will have fifty percent remaining. After second half life, I'll have twenty five percent remaining. So twenty five percent remaining means that uh seventy five percent is removed. So that's two half life. So two half life means I need to multiply this two point six seven by two. So I should be getting around five point three hours. Okay. So please do a quick calculation to verify it. Correct. Okay. Then the next thing is um same thing. I think uh probably they are asking you to make use of the uh. Half life they need. Uh, lead is the final product formed by a series of changes in which the rate determining stage is the radioactive decay of uranium 238. First order kinetics with a half life of 4.9, oh sorry, 4.5 times 10 to the power 9 years. What would be the age of a rock sample originally lead free in which the molar proportion of uranium to lead um, is now um, 1 is to 3. La. Okay, so again, why is three means that um, you 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 are left with twenty five percent um, uranium, right? So, so yep, so same thing. So to 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 have twenty five. Okay, I mean I just circle the same thing. So twenty five percent remaining, right? You need to go through two half life. So basically, just the half life multiplied by two. So that should be that should give you nine point zero times ten of nine years. Okay, so I hope uh, you you probably find it easy. I mean, uh, I think the example given are a little bit on the easy side, but but again, I think it does help you to 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 to, to look at some of the uh, the big picture. Lah. Okay, so next, uh, after the concentration time graph, you have the rate against concentration graph, which is uh, I mean another kind of graph that you know like you can make use of. 
So, so, but the shape is a bit different. So, my advice is don't memorize the shape of the graph. Uh, that's really my advice. My advice is uh, understand it mathematically. Yeah, because if you memorize the shape of the graph, sometimes you get confused. Am I drawing reaction? Or, or sorry, am I drawing concentration time graph or I'm drawing rate against concentration? Okay. Yeah. So, uh, if you if you truly understand uh, what we discussed earlier on on uh, concentration against time, uh, and understand what exactly is zero, first and second order kinetics, right? Then I think this comes as no surprise, lah. Because if I plot, if it's a zero order reaction and I plot rate against concentration, I should get a horizontal line. Okay, that is parallel to the x-axis. Okay, I mean this shouldn't come as a surprise because. Uh, the concentration of R will not change the rates. Okay, then if we if we are looking at uh, uh, first order kinetics, that means that when the concentration uh, of R increase by two times, the rate I expect it to increase by two times. So I should get a straight line that passes through through the origin. Okay, I think this shouldn't come as a huge surprise. Then um, for for other orders that is not one and zero, then I should get a, a curve. Oh, okay, I mean the curve can be a parabola or yeah, so something that you you can um, remember. Okay, probably not remember, but understand it mathematically. So that is why a good understanding of graph uh, is important in studying kinetics. Okay, yeah. So uh, sometimes we ask the students uh, to plot rate against R squared, and we get a straight line that passes through the origin. So this is kind of like a telltale sign that you know we are looking at second order kinetics, right? Okay, and um. I think mathematics does play a super big role here. So, in in the event that you really don't know what the order is, let's say in the experiment, okay. So you can always let's say your, let's say your reactant is A. So you can always let rates uh, be equals to uh, K uh, A to the power M. Yeah. Then what we can do is to linearize the graph. Okay, what do we mean by linearize the graph? So we take either log or log base 10, both sides. So again, we take log base 10, both sides. So we get log rates is equals to log, sorry, log k, okay, plus log a to the power m. Ah, and then you know that you can bring m down, so you get log rates is equals to m log a plus log k. Okay, then uh, if you look at this in on a serious note, this is like y is equals to m x plus c. So once you have the y intercept, you can find k. Once you have the gradient, you can find the order. Yeah, so that's an amazing thing about doing it using this technique. So this is known as linearize the graph. So whenever you don't know what to do, you might want to think about uh, plotting rate log rates against log concentration. Yeah, it might give you a brilliant answer. Okay, I think exercise 4.3, I will leave it to you to work on it on your own and then uh, verify the answer online because uh, I think it does help a lot if you can um, work on it on your own. Okay, and then, uh, yeah, I mean, the example is not that difficult, so uh, please work on it on your own. I'm sure uh, you can come up uh, with the answers yourself. Okay, so finally, I, I just want to talk about rate against time. Um, this is definitely less useful. And I don't think uh, we we often um, test the students on this lah, but but uh, but again, I mean, since it's your it's in your notes, I thought I just want to uh, kind of like mention it briefly lah. So so in this case, um, for a zero order kinetics, uh, you again the same thing, you get a horizontal line that uh, that is parallel to the x-axis. Okay, first order is exponential decay. Okay, and then uh, not first. Not zero, uh, you get some other shapes. Lah. Okay, not yeah. So uh, maybe you want to um, I mean you don't really need to memorize uh, this. As I said, understanding the mathematics is more important than uh, memorizing the shape uh, of the graph. Okay, so uh, just to think of it. Lah. Yeah, and uh, the process of obtaining rate time graph is actually uh, not I mean, not so direct because you 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 have to find the gradient of the concentration time graph at various points in order to obtain the rates, and then from there you plot it against time. Yeah, so it's less intuitive, less useful, I would say. So the the most useful graph will be what we talk about. The, what what we talk about earlier on, 
concentration against time and rate against concentration. Okay, so I will end at uh, I, will, I mean I will end over uh, at page uh, sixty, uh, and then uh, in the next video uh, I will continue from uh, page sixty one.